The Martin XB-51 was a colossal bomber aircraft built in the late 1940s that exceeded all expectations and was probably the finest bomber that never went to battle. Not to be confused with the B-52, one of the most famous aircraft of all time, the B-51's lifespan was too brief to be awarded an official nickname. Still, its unusually prolonged shape granted it the moniker of the Flying Cigar. Faster than almost any fighter of its time, military experts believe the Martin XB-51 could have made a substantial difference in the Southeast Asian Wars, but it was never produced. Defense analyst Robert Dorr wrote in the Defense Media Network, quote, the XB-51 incorporated a rotary weapons bay that enabled it to deliver bombs while flying at high speed. Capable of 645 miles per hour at sea level in level flight, the XB-51 would have been able to run away from most fighters of its era. Despite successful trial runs and a promising future, the B-51 project was ultimately cancelled for mysterious political reasons. Bomber Force. The Glenn L. Martin Company submitted a design model for a high-speed aircraft competition in February of 1946. Their XA-45 emerged as the winner. The aircraft design integrated double twin hybrid engines with two TG-110 turboprop engines and two I-40 turbojets. It had a projected top speed of 525 miles per hour. The Army Air Force, or AAF, then issued a $9.5 million contract to Martin in 1946. The agreement stipulated the manufacturing of wind tunnel models, mock-ups, and two prototypes. Over a year later, the AAF evolved into the U.S. Air Force, and the organization's plans immediately changed. The idea of using turboprop engines on the XA-45 was dropped, and on June 5, 1948, the original design morphed into something unlike any aircraft ever seen among U.S. manufacturers. The project, still in its blueprint stage, was redesignated XB-51, now classified as a bomber. As tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union increased and the Cold War began to take form, the U.S. was in a pressing need to build a massive bomber force that could face the Soviets' progressive advances in atomic technology. An unorthodox aircraft. On September 4, 1949, the first XB-51 prototype was rolled out at the Martin facilities in Middle River, Maryland. The airframe's empty weight was 29,584 pounds, and it increased by another 30,000 when fully loaded. Despite its sturdy constitution, it was officially a light bomber. The odd configuration of the all-metal XB-51 consisted of an 85-foot, 1-inch fuselage and a 53-foot, 1-inch wingspan. The mid-wing monoplane had the first variable incidence wing fitted on a bomber, which enabled the pilot to adjust the leading edge angle. However, the 35-degree swept wings and the 6-degree anhedral were radically thin compared to its bulkier body. What the airframe lacked in aerodynamic finesse, it made up in sheer engine power. The engine's arrangement was perhaps its most unorthodox trait. Unusual for a combat aircraft, the XB-51 was a three-engine powered model, with two General Electric J-47 turbojets mounted in pods under the forward fuselage, and a third housed internally at the rear. An air inlet for the rear engine was located at the tail fin base on top of the fuselage, while the T-tail configuration kept the horizontal stabilizers away from the lower engine's efflux. The XB-51 is thought to be the first tri-jet in the world, with two of its engines rated at 5,200 pounds of thrust. Built for a crew of two, the cockpit was pressurized and air-conditioned. Also, the seats were equipped with the first upward ejection system developed by Martin. The pilot's seat rested beneath a fighter-style bubble canopy that was too small compared to its massive frame. A second seat for a navigator-operator bombardier was placed to the side below it, with a tiny observation window on the starboard side. Leading-edge slats were extended along the wings, and full-width slotted flaps covered 75% of the trailing edge, with the rest left for small ailerons. Spoilers were positioned on the upper surface and provided much of the roll control. The XB-51 included a bicycle-type landing gear, previously evaluated on the Martin XB-26H Marauder, 
and wingtip outrigger wheels to steady the aircraft on the tandem main gear. This configuration was required to simultaneously touch down upon landing. The aircraft would reach the necessary attitude when landing through wing incidents that increased at lower speeds. A shorter takeoff run was achieved by variable incidents combined with the slotted flaps. Even more, four rocket-assisted takeoff bottles could be fitted to improve takeoff performance. Martin's trademark was the rotating weapons bay, which enabled the XB-51 to deliver bombs while flying at high speed. It could carry from eight 500-pound bombs to one 4,000-pound bomb, or a single nuclear freefall bomb. Additionally, two 2,000-pound bombs could be carried on external hardpoints, and eight 20mm cannons could be installed on the aircraft's nose. Fulfilled Expectations After completing ground tests, the first XB-51 prototype was ready for its maiden flight. The aircraft flew for the first time on October 28, 1949, at Middle River, piloted by Orville Edward Pat Tibbs. Initial tests went smoothly, but on December 28th, the main gear collapsed on landing. After undergoing several repairs, the prototype was restored to flight status in early 1950. While flying at high speeds, the pilot reported vibrations in the tail and a tendency to Dutch roll. To mitigate the problem, a bullet fairing was added at the intersection of the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Out of the many experimental aircraft developed by the U.S. Air Force during the 1940s and 1950s, the military was most serious about the XB-51, which was planned to be part of several bomber squadrons. By April of 1950, a second prototype flew for the first time at Morocco Airfield in California. It participated in several gunnery and bombing trials, with a focus on the rotary bomb dispenser. Test pilot Major Charles E. Yeager once managed to execute five realistic bombing missions in under three hours. Pilots were generally satisfied with the XB-51's performance. From its T-tail to the tip of its nose, every feature proved easy to operate. Moreover, it was effective under simulated combat conditions, although the aircraft was not built for aggressive maneuvers. When the U.S. Air Force issued a new requirement for a low-level bombing and close support aircraft based on early Korean War experience, the Avro Canada CF-100 and the English Electric Canberra entered the competition along with the XB-51. Early test flights showed that the XB-51 was significantly faster than the Canberra. However, its endurance was lower, and its landing gear was deemed unsuitable for emergency forward airfields. Ultimately, the XB-51 lost, but Martin was awarded a contract to manufacture the Canberra under license. The XB-51 would never be produced, but its novel configuration would ultimately be used in American, British, and Soviet airline designs. Unfortunately, the only two prototypes built did not see the light of the 21st century. It's fate. Maintenance staff, pilots, and designers were all fond of the XB-51. It was a radical aircraft, but still practical. The model was so versatile that a seaplane version was proposed at one point. Despite being cancelled, the two prototypes continued to operate in research missions, but both were eventually lost in accidents. On May 9, 1952, the second prototype crashed while performing low-altitude aerobatic maneuvers at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Major Neil H. Lathrop perished during the explosion. Four years later, the first prototype would be immortalized in the Warner Brothers movie Toward the Unknown, starring William Holden and Lloyd Nolan. The aircraft starred as the Gilbert XF-120 and had the name painted on its nose. But as the XB-51 took off from El Paso International Airport en route to Edlin Air Force Base to shoot additional footage for the movie, the aircraft crashed. The pilot had attempted to get airborne while taking off with slower acceleration than required. As he approached the end of the runway, the aircraft prematurely rotated and stalled. Major James O. Rudolph and Staff Sergeant Wilbur R. Savage lost their lives in the incident. Test pilot Pat Tibbs believed the aircraft wasn't deployed to service because it was deemed too revolutionary and most operational bombers were driven by propellers. However, it is also said that the imminent Korean War was crucial in the decision 
with range and loader time as significant factors. Former director of the National Air and Space Museum, Walter J. Boyne, believed there was some prejudice against Martin-designed aircraft on behalf of the U.S. Air Force. However, he reported that a significant amount of the government's records on the XB-51 had gone missing, so the truth remains unknown. Defense analyst Robert Doerr added, quote, For political reasons, not because of any aeronautical flaw, the U.S. Air Force ended up not with a B-51, but with an entirely different aircraft built at the same factory. Experts believe today that failure to put the B-51 into series production was a big mistake. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channels for more stories about the world wars, aircraft, spaceflight, and timeless heroes.